Hello and welcome. I'm your host, Claire Marquick, and this is Real Life Business. Hello and welcome to episode number 24 of the Real Life Business podcast, the show that helps you balance running your business with everything else going on in your life by bringing you stories from real life business owners about the real life stuff that goes on behind the scenes of running their business. This week, I am chatting to Madhu J. Kamaran, who is the director and principal consultant at Think Stride Coaching and Consulting. Madhu's professional background is in leadership development and cultural transformation, and she has a wealth of knowledge having worked for some big organizations such as PwC and HSBC in India. But she came to a realization that would completely alter the trajectory of her life. Fast forward a few years and she's now a mum living in a completely different country and working for herself and in this conversation we chat about that journey and the internal evolution that happened along the way. Madhu is a straight talker with a wicked sense of humour and I cannot wait to share this conversation with you so sit back, relax and enjoy. Thank you so much, Madhu, for joining me here today. I'm really excited by this conversation because we always seem to touch on so much gold whenever we chat, even when we're talking about the most random things. So I'm really excited (laughs) to see where this conversation goes today. Uh, Why don't we start off with you um, sharing a bit more about your background, um, who Mm -hmm. you are, what you do, and uh, what you love about what you're doing right now? Yeah. um, Well, right now I work as an executive um, and leadership coach and a facilitator. So I love in working with businesses, um, typically small to medium sized businesses, because I think when um, a, a, a business people start growing, um, that's when leadership becomes a challenge. And this is applicable even to, a, I think to me as a person, even as a small business owner, right? I look at, I always looked at leadership as, oh, it's about after others, or it's taking care of others, but it starts with us. I'll, probably cover a little bit of this when we talk (laughs) and I always look at so a lot of what I do is about helping within organizations build a better culture uh, build better leadership capability and uh, what I want to bring to the conversation even when when you reached out to me was how do I apply that in the context of for example even a small business owner or or a solo prone like us so when I look at myself um, the culture that I'm bringing is um, my attitude, my values, um, for instance, there is a culture that I'm bringing, whether or not uh, I'm aware of it <laughs> consciously or unconsciously, I am creating a culture within my organization. Um, I think, yeah, I think that's a really important point you make, isn't it? Because I've certainly no, noticed it as well, sort of running networking events and things mm-hmm. like that. Like there will be people that self-select or de- deselect themselves from even attending mm-hmm. because they don't view themselves as leaders because mm-hmm. they might be a small a small like you say solopreneur or even mm-hmm. a mumpreneur mom, working mm-hmm. from home whether you mm-hmm. like that terminology or not mm-hmm. um, and we can we can talk ourselves out of being a leader but really like leadership is all around us all the time isn't it and if we're influencing someone even if we're influencing ourselves yeah we're exhibiting leadership qualities so I absolutely. love how you're sort of bringing that into the the smaller business space as well absolutely so yeah, that's that's what I, I look forward to bringing. That's what I do. So I'm into yeah, making basically helping people step into leadership. I love that. I love that. Mm-hmm. What's um, where did you where did you start your career? Like you haven't always been working for yourself, no. have you? So how, well, tell no. us a bit about that transition. Yeah, sure. Um, oh my god. So <laughs> about <laughs> about a decade ago, I started my career as an engineer. Believe it or not, Claire. Oh, wow. <laughs> Um, so I, yeah, anyway, so I started off working as an electronics engineer for about a year. I did that. I was like, oh my God, I can't stand this job. <laughs> it's not for me. Now I know why. Yeah. Um, it doesn't match my sort of behavioral traits, I guess. Detail is not my area of strength. Anyway, yeah. so from engineering, I moved into, I did my master's in human resources. Then I started working in HR. So my first organization was PWC. So when I look back, I started off as a people and change consultant, which is what I do right now. Um, but, <laughs> and then I worked at HSBC, again, looking after culture, you know, a lot of leadership development work. And uh, I moved to Australia about three and a half years back. And um, 
I don't know, I made it this, I sort of felt like I had done enough of what I could do within an organization. Mm -hmm. And there was only so much you can control and influence when you are within a, an authority structure. And I felt like there was a need to challenge leaders in organizations. There was a need to do, um, to be that person who does that, um, who goes beyond, you know, what you're limited to. So, which is why I transitioned into leadership coaching. It's um it's a really interesting thing that you said there, isn't it? How you felt like you'd reached you'd reached kind of a point where that you couldn't go any further doing what mm. you wanted to do within mm. an organization, within like mm. a structure that has, you know, other people's agendas are, are ruling the show kind of thing. Yeah. I think yeah. that's probably something that a lot of people listening can can resonate with, but mm. not everyone is um what's the word? Maybe courageous enough to take mm. that jump so mm. i mean what was it was it the physically moving countries and you know what this is a, a complete <laughs> fresh start was that kind of the, the kicker for you or was there something else inside? no it was it was more of a personal story i think um so i was looking after diversity inclusion culture for the bank and um during my maternity break somewhere i really started questioning what i was doing i felt like um it doesn't matter what um, um beautiful policies that we had or all these, uh, you know, fancy projects that we were doing when there is a leadership gap, nothing else matters. So I felt myself like I was, though I was this person who was supposed to look after diversity and inclusion, I myself felt discriminated as a woman. <laughs> and I'm like, what is all this? It, nothing of none of this is helping. And all the conversations that we are having with leaders within the organization, I felt like was not making much of a difference if um, that there isn't self-awareness that's happening maybe within the leaders. I felt like there's, there's a big gap. There's mm. something to, it, it, it cannot, which cannot be solved by me creating beautiful policies and taking care of projects. <laughs> I didn't have too much. That's all that I knew at that point in stage. Um, that's all that I knew. And I was like, there's more work to do here. And I felt Somewhere, I think it was a personal journey. I felt like there was so much more in me that I could explore, like just going through the process during my maternity leave. And before I came to the point that, oh, I, there is more to me, I was at a point where I'm like, is, am I really good enough for that job? That's where I started. <laughs> because I started questioning my ability, my, worthy, my worthiness for the role that I was doing. Am I even cut for a corporate job? do i know what i'm doing here that's where i started yeah um and eventually i'm like what are you doing here if you are questioning what you're doing then either you say this is not for me and give up <laughs> or if you want to do something then stretch yourself do something different yeah uh, maybe something more courageous that was self-talk yep. so <laughs> um so this was a decision i made back in india even before we i came here i'm like i'm not going back to a corporate job there is something else that i'm cut that I need to do. I don't know what it is. Um, <laughs> so I think him coming here was like, okay, everything is fresh. There is no baggage here. Nobody knows you as anything. Yeah. Why don't you do what your heart says? Give it a go. What's the worst thing that can happen? Like, you know, I can always find a job. That was the thinking. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and, at, and at that stage, how old was your, your son? My son was one and a half years old then. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> He's four now. <laughs> I think, I mean, I, I resonate with your story so much, um, mm -hmm. you know, being in that, that technical space, then kind of losing that, then going into, um, going into a more commercial environment, yeah. feeling like um, I could make a change and then realizing yeah. that that I couldn't and having that burning that kind of that longing inside mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. longing is the right word like you know there's something more in you but you, yeah like you say you don't know what it is you don't know yeah. how to get it out yeah. and I think that actually ties in really nicely with what what you the work that you're doing now doesn't it because yeah. mm. that, that's all that leadership journey isn't it it's it's yeah. helping us um bringing awareness to what we've all got inside of us and mm. how we can utilize that to then yeah. propel ourselves yeah. forward 
yeah and to be very honest um i didn't start off very selfless or anything like you know it was not like i was pursuing this higher purpose it appeared in front none of that sort <laughs> i just wanted to get out of the rut i'm like it started in a very selfish way that this is not what i want there's something more that i need to do here it's it was all about me in the beginning um that's where i started <laughs> yeah the whole achiever mindset i call it uh, <laughs> oh how can i get out of this how can i do things differently is there anything i can do that's where it started but now it's more of oh this is what this is where i'm going this is this is why i'm doing this <laughs> and it's not about me anymore tell us tell me more about that i'm, I'm fascinated about that because i yeah. think like we need to have that inner that inner voice there's there's something isn't there that mm. whether it's a, a milestone event in our life whether it's a you know a trigger or a traumatic event in our life or whether we just get to a point where that inner voice inside gets so loud that it makes mm. us do something different but mm. tell us about more about that transition you were just talking about in terms of how you approach things yeah um I think uh, it starts, I mean, we are very much a survival based beings, right? <laughs> yep. We want Especially to survive, now. we want to get <laughs> away we're... from things, uh, what doesn't feel right, we want to get away from it. Um, I think that's that's where it was for me. I'm like, I can't survive in a corporate setup <laughs> anymore. So what is this new thing? What else is available for me? Um, I think, like I said, very, very low. <laughs> very low level thinking but i think that's where we all start i think that's where every great journey starts probably at survival stage mm -hmm. and then it was about oh okay um now i need to make friends with who are maybe searching for something like that so it was about oh who's my tribe who's the kind of people who are like me pissed off with where they are but want to do something better so which is where i started going to for example when i came to australia I'm like, okay, this is a country which is much more developed. So maybe there are people like me out there. <laughs> so I started going to networking events, with that, which is where I went to a coaching schools networking event. And I met people who wanted to become coaches. I'm like, oh, this seems perfect to where I want to go. Uh, it sort of fits in. And I signed up and I started, you know, my journey as becoming a coach. Yeah. Um, and then I was like, okay, now I found people who are like me and we're on this. Now I need to get somewhere. Like I need to achieve something. <laughs> I, I, it can't just be the journey. So I need to take some action. So it was a lot of imperfect action. I didn't know what my clientele was, what my niche has to be. All I knew was I'll do what feels sort of something that I know, which mm -hmm. for me, when it came back to something to do with, with the business world, working with maybe women, that's where I started uh, yeah. working with, you know, women leaders. And then I realized um, along the journey, it's, it's a process of evolution, I guess. Yeah. Um, oh, this is not what I want. Actually, I have a larger purpose that I need to take care of. And, you know, it's just, yeah, I think that's how, that's how it has been. It's, it, I, I think what I'm taking from your story there is that there's there's a there's something like we just spoke about before. There's something. There's a there's a trigger. However, however, um, I think you described it as low level thinking or selfish thinking. Mm, you know, at the time mm, it was just mm, purely get me mm. out of this shit show and get me somewhere <laughs> where I want to be, kind of thing, yes. where I feel a bit safer or I feel yeah. a bit better, kind of thing. Yeah. And then exactly like you say, it's it's not necessarily having all the answers straight away and knowing everything and having the perfect business set up. Is yes. it? It's it's just starting a journey. It's taking mm. those first few steps, mm. making a decision because ultimately, mm. ultimately, I mean, I don't know about you, but this is where I floundered a bit right at the beginning when I went mm. out on my own. I didn't make any set decisions. I just thought mm. I'm just gonna put put some put things out there and see who comes see who comes to me see who's attracted to me yeah right and i was kind of like dabbling a bit over here and doing a bit mm. over there and a bit over mm. there and, and it wasn't mm. really very clear but yeah. i mean uh, we can we can critique ourselves for that but yeah. exactly like you just said it's an evolution it's a journey isn't it and yeah yeah we, we have to go through those stages yes. <laughs> then we have to reach a realization mm -hmm. of okay this perhaps isn't the most effective way of moving yeah. forward <laughs> that's right but we only know that because we went through that and we know it sucks <laughs> yes <laughs> so where did you get to what was that what was that next next moment of evolution for you in your development then 
what the imperfect action brought was some form of growth and some form of achievement right you need yeah. to like in terms of business words some income okay i'm making money out of this thing it's not just something in the air right? this is something that you know people recognize me people call me they trust me i have paying clients yeah. i think that's that was the first proof that oh this stuff is working <laughs> something is working yeah <laughs> now is that is, is that ideal for me is the way i was making money is that ideal for the lifestyle that i wanted to create is that does that really give me satisfaction in terms of what kind of impact that i want to have you know that's how you start thinking after a while like for example i was just telling you right like i i was doing i've been doing a lot of workshops speaking and now i'm at a point where i'm like i'll do that but I want to work with clients over a period of time because then I feel that I'm making an impact and transforming something about, for example, a culture. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm at a point where I can say no to clients who are not ready for it. Um, so how do I put this? Um, I think just those imperfect actions was, was important. Otherwise, I would have always been questioning, is this where I want to go? Is this what I want to be doing? Is this mm -hmm. sustainable? Mm. that mm. question because when i was no more in survival then i could think about ah how can i you know when survival is taken care of we can think about higher level needs <laughs> if exactly. that makes sense uh, yeah it it does it does and it's uh, you know we've we've known each other for a while now and then we sort of chatted a lot a lot in the past and i think mm. we've sort of shared this evolution journey and mm. we sort of um started in the same place in is in, in as much as um the same coaching school but yeah. then we've sort of um diverged and come back together and diverged again mm. and and i think that's testament to the evolution isn't it and that's mm. testament to mm. the imperfect action i mean mm. i know for me that mm. i have to just keep stepping forward because yeah. i will sit and i will i will just go into complete procrastination mode yeah. <laughs> and and i will do nothing mm. because i'll be you know over analytical overthinking yeah. everything yeah. and trying to come plan every eventuality of yes. what might happen and and <laughs> it's something that we sort of that that um is going to come out in tomorrow's episode this week's episode when when it comes out in, in as much yeah. we need to put a little bit of thought to a plan yes. we can't just act completely on a whim can we but yes. at the same time we can't wait for everything to be perfect before we yes. take action yeah that's right um at least i think what for me what worked well was i gave i made a lot of terrible mistakes <laughs> like screw things up <laughs> i would try everything that i learned right which was probably one good thing that i did oh I reach out to people on linkedin so i connect people i write them a message this is what i'm doing do you want to connect and i'm in this mode of surviving so i'm making mistakes i'm reaching out to people randomly um and i'm like oh my god never write that message again like that's terrible it's so salesy why are you wanting to be salesy <laughs> yeah so but i wouldn't know how it feels unless i do it exactly exactly and i've had the ex exact same things happen you know someone will send a message back a, co a cold short message back yeah. or something and i'm like oh shit. and yeah. then it's like how would i feel if i'd have just got that yes. message completely out of the blue oh yeah but exactly like you say like you have to you have to stuff up essentially to to learn and grow don't you what to know what not to do next time <laughs> yeah yeah like you had to ask for sales you have otherwise how would ever get a paying client maybe the way i did it was not refined in the beginning like right now i don't even feel like i'm it's a sale it's it's more about oh i'm serving people and i'm seeing if they're a match to what i do mm. um and i am willing to say no or walk away when i know that they are not a match uh to what i do so it's not selling anymore it's about they're looking for something and is that something that i could help them achieve and if i can i have to put my best foot forward otherwise they're missing out on what they i'm not helping someone evolve or become better or a team or an organization get better um mm. and that's the service <laughs> Ex well exactly yeah i'm curious how how much easier is that um to actually implement in practice when you've got 
you know, stable income coming in? Like, is it, yeah. is it, is it a, a money confidence thing? You know, it's like, okay, well, I know I've got regular money coming in, therefore I can more confidently say no, or is it, or is it, is it a complete mindset thing? And even if there's no money coming in for the month, if a perfect yeah. client, you know, an imperfect client comes your way, it yeah. would still be something you say no to. Where does that kind of um, juggle I would say an, Like the, it's only mindset is a bit idealistic. Um, because we are real people, right? Like mm -hmm. we pay bills. Yes. <laughs> I wish yes. mindset paid bills. <laughs> it doesn't. <laughs> it's it's it doesn't mean that mindset is not important. Of course it is, of course. But I feel that in the beginning, uh, even if it's not phenomenal money or a money to sustain a, 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 a livelihood, even if it is some form of growth, some form of progress in terms of money, in terms of recognition, um, in terms of social acknowledgement, um, the basic needs are what? Survival and significance maybe to a certain extent. I think when that starts happening is when you can, your mind becomes open um, to, the, to the idea of serving, uh, to the idea of contribution, uh, yeah. you know. But when you're physically, when it's not met, when you're not there, at the back of your mind, you're body is just striving for survival that's that's how i think i mean that's how as a designed. human civilization yeah right? exactly that's how that's how we're programmed isn't it that's yeah. how we're designed back to that like right. save the tooth tiger caveman era when you know if we're literally being chased and we're running for our lives you know that's like right. we are in survival mode aren't yeah. we and we do yeah. slip back into that ancient um oh, yeah. survival mode and i think i, I think that there's a lot of that going on right now mm. isn't there mm. because mm. there's a hell of a lot of businesses oh, that are really struggling some that are completely closed some that have had to pivot exponentially to get yeah. to get money coming in and i yeah. think that's where i was kind of maybe without even thinking about it when the words came out of my mouth where i was getting to with that question um in as much as it 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 might sound very, very righteous and very, um, you know, an amazing place to be, to be able to turn work away that isn't ideal for us. Yeah. But that's not to say that in some circumstances, we just don't pick the low hanging ah, fruit. In the beginning, anything is okay. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? That's how it should be because anything is okay is what brings the money, brings that validation in the beginning. So that's where that's where we start uh yeah that's where i started i had to on terrible clients which i then i learned oh my god never say yes to this client who, is, <laughs> who doesn't want to take any ownership but i had to do that if i didn't get say that yes to that then i wouldn't be at this point where i'm saying no or i have the choice to say no yeah so tell that tell us a bit more about that evolution because when when we're an employee and we're working for someone else you know our, our mind our mindset is in one place we have to transition don't we 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 have to if we're deciding that we're going to step out on to, on our own we can't i don't believe you can run a successful business with an employee mindset we, we've mm -hmm. got to grow ourselves don't we Definitely. and again that kind of comes full circle Definitely. back to what you do in developing yeah. leaders so tell us a bit more about that journey for you mm, really good question um one when you are on your own everything change. you start from scratch Let's just say, even if you got to the point of, oh, I'm all about serving people and helping others. When you have on your own, you start from survival. <laughs> so, you know, what I do, what do I need to get done? How do I learn from the best? Uh, take imperfect action, all of that stuff. You know, when you asked me that question, I thought of how long can you stay in that? Mm. The unfortunate part is a lot of people start off but being very competitive, what I call achievers mindset, oh, what can I get? What can I get? What can I get? Um, how do I survive? How do I make money? Um, yeah, I it's, clients. yeah. Yeah. How do I get clients? Can That's get a good place friends? to start. That's where to start. Please start there. <laughs> but can do you have do you have to stay there forever? That's terrible. That's terrible. It, it's it's draining as well draining. isn't it you know i talk about um energy and and you know it's a really high energy it's a high demand yes. of of our yes. energy isn't it being in that yes. place of just i've yeah. got to get more clients i've got to get more yes. customers i've got to get more people through the door i've got to sell more stuff i've got to like it's it's, it's exhausting it's exhausting yes. me even saying that's it. right <laughs> that's right it, it's very burning out I, I call it hustling for our worth yeah um i think that's hustling for your worth, which is fine, which is 
it's exactly. when it starts gotta but do then it after start. a point you've got to know your value you don't need to hustle for your worth you you have to know your value um mm. and you have to move from getting to giving mm. like what can i get what can, no what can i give now that i have worked i have experience i have the confidence i have the it, it's no more about fear it's about trust you know, mm. it's not making decisions from a place of fear, scarcity anymore. Like, of course, that's where you start. That's fine. But eventually you get to a point where you need to start make decisions, making decisions from a place of self-trust, from faith. You've got to think abundantly. Like, you know, if someone's doing well, there's something they, they are doing right. What can I learn from them? Rather than being all this worked up about, oh my God. <laughs> that, that's a that's a really big mental challenge isn't it mm -hmm. i think particularly how and we've spoken about this a lot on on previous mm -hmm. episodes as well particularly how visible mm -hmm. everyone's perceived perfect life and business mm -hmm. is because it's right mm -hmm. there in our faces on social media mm -hmm. and yeah. and it can be really really easy to to compare ourselves so yeah. to be able to sit in a space of comfort with ourselves yeah. and like you say trust with ourselves that can be really yeah. challenging can't it mm. is that is that an easy transition that you've made or has it been challenging for yeah you oh think? my god it's been a <laughs> constant uh i think yeah it's just been a work in progress i think it will stay that way forever i don't yeah. think uh, if you get to perfect there is that's it and there's nothing more to go um yeah. but i think it's been a work in progress for me what i noticed is the reason a lot of people can't and even and this applies to businesses who people have been in business for 15 years or more it has nothing to do with how old you are in a business you could be three years into a business and still be a leader uh, have a leader's mindset and abundance mindset you could be 15 years and you're still in a scarcity mindset an achiever competitive mindset so this is nothing to do with timelines mm, um, but it does, a it's a point. journey yeah, and the journey can happen in 12 months, three journey could have never happened in 15 years. <laughs> I'm sure there's a hell of a lot of people out there <laughs> listening who are working for someone who mm -hmm. has been doing their thing for 20, 30, 40 years, and they're still yeah. very much in that, like you say, achiever, survival mindset, yeah. my way yeah. or the highway, this is what you got to do. And yeah. yeah, yeah. Isn't that what happens in organizations as well? Instead of being leaders, they're just getting there to get the gold stars and it's do doing no one no good. Yeah, it's the same thing. Yeah, it's very short um, term as well, isn't it? I mean, this is something that me and um, Terry, my hubby, we talk about it all the time, mm. even going right up to you know governments and things. It's like everybody mm. appears mm. Um, to make such short term decisions because that's mm. what's going to benefit that yes. particular person in the yeah. here and now in the, yeah. the tenure that they're in that position mm. as opposed to having that more abundant service mindset mm. of how can we how can mm. we improve this situation long term and maybe yeah. i won't still be here to feel to see the benefit of that but yeah. you know i can know inside <laughs> it was my work it's a yeah yeah it is i think it, it comes down to this claire i mean this is what i noticed right um why are someone who's been in business for 15 years making enough money more money than probably you know whatever they don't even have to think about it anymore it's coming in there is wealth there is everything still there have their mindset is in survival because um this evolution is not tied to external things mm. so much as it is internal so which is which is why to me self-care becomes important and when i say self-care just being there for yourself. Like um, if you are struggling, saying that, yeah, it, I know it's a struggle and it's okay. It comes down to simple things like that. You need to set a boundary, bloody set the boundary. <laughs> Don't treat yourself like a machine. <laughs> and how many people would be guilty of doing that? Yeah. <laughs> What are some yeah. of those rules that you set for yourself then? You know, mm. what are some of those non-negotiable things that you have in place that, mm. that creates the boundaries for you or gives you that sense of self-care? Yeah. Um, one is I, I don't take bullshit from anyone. <laughs> this has been, I don't know, it's just helped me a lot. Like if I feel like someone is, whether it's a client or whether it's my you know, as people whom I live with, if, you know, I've been asked, expected to do something that I, you know, that it's 
just not doesn't fit my values i would just say no um mm. and um i think staying away from people pleasing that's a lesson i learned early on the more of a people pleaser you are you are less of a leader so mm. if you want to look good for the client sorry you're not serving them mm that's a big you know? thing isn't it mm yeah even, even with clients it's the same <laughs> it's it, because and, and that's it that's interesting we'll come back to your um mm. your self-care for yourself and non-negotiables in a minute because i just want to pick up on that that's i think a lot and i know this myself you know when i think back to when i went into my first leadership role mm. in an accounting firm i probably had i don't know half a dozen accountants under me yeah. um a, you know a big big portfolio of clients like millions of dollars of clients and i like I was like in my mid twenties, I had no mm. idea. Like the mm. biggest thing for me was I just wanted to be liked. And, mm. you know, like, I'm like, just, I just want to be, you know, I want to be light and friendly and I was chatty yeah. and it's this and it was that. Yeah. And, you know, like I had a good bond with the people um, yeah. who I worked with. So mm -hmm. I think they kind of gritted their teeth and I was like, okay, mm. she's yeah. class. Um, <laughs> but looking back now, I cringe. Mm. And, and I just, because I was so, wanting to not offend people and mm. and wanting to be liked and and mm. we don't that doesn't have to be in an organization does it that could be with a, a business owner and suppliers yeah. or um you yeah. know people that we have to partner with or whatever we we can be so caught up in being nice that we're not yeah. actually helping the situation yeah yeah true true um and the opposite of not being uh nice is not being an asshole right yeah. <laughs> we often tend to think like that <laughs> <laughs> it's not at all it's just saying hey this is where this is what i think and uh, i i accept the way you are or the way you think that's fine you know and this oh, i wonder that I'm, I'm curious i think this is my maybe a question i've asked of you before in mm -hmm. another forum but i'm going to ask it here where's that line where is that line between confident self-belief self-assuredness sticking mm -hmm. to our boundaries and arrogance mm -hmm. um for me, it's simple as this. If I am equal to you, you are not higher than me or I am not higher than you. We both are equal. You have the right to feel. I accept whatever you feel. You have a, you have a belief about something. I, I don't agree with you, but I, I'm okay. Mm -hmm. The moment I bring judgment to you and the moment I think, oh, the way you think is terrible, you're, a, you're inferior in some way, you suck that's that's where things you cross the boundary ah yeah i like that distinction yeah yeah i like it <laughs> yeah like people have the right to feel a particular way and that's the way they've grown up or whatever that's fine I i'm learning to do this by the way claire it's not yeah. easy to do with everybody um especially people whom we live with sometimes <laughs> You, you still, you still, you still right. You still, you still human, and you still have your little rants yes. and moans about people. Yeah, <laughs> good. So yeah. do I. <laughs> then we can bring ourselves back, can't we? Yeah, absolutely. Get that out, get that emotion yeah. out, and bring ourselves back. Yeah, yeah. Just bringing non-judgment. See, that's the thing, right? The moment we bring non-judgment to ourselves, it's easier to bring non-judgment to others. Mm. Like yes. if I'm judging so many things about who I am, I forget about others, right? <laughs> And that again, nice loop back to that whole concept, that whole theme of leadership starts with self. Like okay. it's, it yes. starts with ourselves, doesn't it? Everything that we need to have within us as a, as a, a to be a good leader, we need to mm. see it and experience it and believe it in ourselves first, mm. don't we? True. Yeah. True. What are some mm. of the things that, I mean, like we, we talk about in the show all the time, the ups and downs of business, there's, there's good times, there's bad times mm. right now. I don't, I, I don't even know what the state of things in South Australia mm. is compared to, to what, where we are here, mm. but how do you get through that roller coaster? What helps you level out your thinking in that roller coaster of business when you've got, you know, a, a toddler and a normal motherhood life going on as well? Mm. Yeah. Hmm, it's a very interesting question because I'm <laughs> the worst person. Like I'm still learning this. When I have clients, um, it, but that's the whole thing. When everything is working in our favor, it's so easy to be this. Oh, I have a growth mindset. I yeah. look at the positive side of things, um, you know, and all of that. But when things are not working out, 
then our mind automatically tends to exaggerate that. <laughs> right? Oh my God, I'm back to square one. How do I find clients? My God, this whole COVID thing, there is, yeah, like we start freaking out. Um, I think it just comes to me. This is what I have learned now over two years of all oh, oh, this, putting myself through suffering for no reason. Like mm. if there is something I can control and influence, that's simply what I focus on. Yeah. Like if this is my reality, what can I do within this reality? Mm. That's it. I, I think that's great advice. And, and also just uh, being human in that process. Mm -hmm. And like you say, if we have a, if we have a little mini meltdown and we go straight back to yeah. hiding that's in the fine. back of the cave, chasing, <laughs> being chased by a saber tooth tiger, yeah. just stay there for a while. Yes. <laughs> That's a really About good five point. minutes of madness yeah. or craziness yeah. or whatever it is. Yes. I think the, the problem is we sort of expect ourselves to feel a particular way. Oh, you can't, shouldn't be feeling fear. You should be, you should be looking for opportunities. You should be thinking positive. Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> like, yeah. right. You are, it matters to you. Your business bloody matters to you, which is why you feel bad. Yeah. So, and it's okay um, not being any hurry to hurry or how we are feeling or how we should be feeling. Why? Uh, I think that's the worst thing to do to ourselves. Uh, this is what I learned. <laughs> it's, that, it's that judgment of ourselves again, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, when we start judging and we start beating ourselves mm. up. I think yeah. I, um, I, I stick something in my stories. I think it was just the other day. Uh, you know, I, I, say to people if if the words that we're saying to ourselves in our head if we were to mm. say them out loud to our child how would we feel mm. um and and a lot of the time it's oh you bloody idiot oh you're so stupid what'd you do yes. that for you idiot yeah. you know like imagine saying that to your mm. child like mm. imagine the look on their face imagine yeah. like how you would feel looking at the tears coming down their face when they're looking at you like why can't we why is that okay for us to say that yeah. to ourselves? If we yeah. couldn't say it to our four-year-old or our eight-year-old or however old our child is, if we mm -hmm. couldn't say it to them, why can we say it to ourselves? Why is that yeah. okay? Yeah. Um, and for people who struggle with self-care, <laughs> as if I don't, but <laughs> um, but for for I, I've definitely gotten better. Um, I, I hardly have any negative self-talk. Um, I can say that finally. Yeah. Um, and when I catch myself doing that I'm, I'm often quick enough to say what the hell like you don't deserve that like just yeah um the easiest uh, tip would be how would you talk to someone whom you love yeah if it's your child if it's whatever think of if you don't have a child you know think of someone whom you love if they were in the exact same situation let's say it's covid they care about their business what would you say to them and say exactly the same thing <laughs> yes Yes, I love that. There was something you said at the beginning of that bit that I was going to pick up on, and now I've completely forgotten. So it doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> yeah. But I think that the lesson that we get from this this part of it is, you know, that that judgment piece of ourself. Mm. Um, yeah, it, it doesn't help us, does it? Doesn't yeah, help no. us in the slightest. No. And it's I mean, funny because the moment we give ourselves permission to feel fear, anxiety, to feel discomfort and just sit with it don't judge it don't try to push it aside it just goes away yeah it has to yeah and then your mind is clear you're able to think better um then you see opportunities and then you start taking action all everything falls in place yeah when you stop just stop for that moment yeah mm. i remembered it was when you said um you're getting better at the um the negative self-talk and and mm. you, you don't do much of that anymore yeah. it, it's like um I, I the analogy that just popped in my head it's like walking into a gym for the first time and deciding i'm suddenly going to be strong and be able to deadlift whatever weight mm. is a challenging deadlift i don't even know mm. um you, you can't just make a decision to suddenly stop the self-talk and then beat yourself up three days later because you're still doing self-talk like yeah it's the same yes. thing you can't walk into a gym and pick up a few hundred kilos and suddenly mm. just be able to do it easy peasy like it's a mm. it's again it's an imperfect action isn't it it's mm. starting it's, it's starting on the small thing at a time and and building up and when you do notice yourself stuffing up it's checking mm. in it's like oh 
Okay. Mm. No, I'm not stupid. Maybe that was just a bit of a poor decision. Mm. That's something I say to my kids all the time, you know, especially mm. our eldest. He'll be like, God, I'm so stupid. I'm like, no, mm. you're not stupid. You yeah. just made a bit of a dumb decision. <laughs> actually a really good differentiation Claire uh something that I I often yeah sort, sort of teach people especially women right it's not about who you are it's what you did there is a difference yeah because the moment it's who you are oh I am stupid it's it's an identity thing so it's very self depreciate like self deprecating yeah um and yuck <laughs> it, exactly it, it demonizes it our self-esteem with... it just has to eat up eat our self-esteem but the moment it's oh something i did then i can do something about that exactly. um and i that it's not affecting my self-worth my self-esteem I'm, I'm confident it's almost boosting our self-esteem mm. because we can go wow okay i recognize exactly what went on there and yeah. now i've got the control to make sure it doesn't happen again yeah um, very empowering to think like that yeah yeah 100 percent about who i am yes nice. i like that yeah it's a good <laughs> reminder absolutely love it change See, your strategy. that's what i said at the beginning we always always come up with these little nuggets of yeah. gold <laughs> yeah absolutely. tell us where where um i'm gonna I fire some quick fire questions at you mm -hmm. in a moment but um if people want to find out more about you your business mm -hmm. you've got a book as well yeah. like where how can they find out more about you you, you can go to thinkstride.com yep it's think stride s-t-r-i-d-e yep stride.com um you can also look up my name just google my name madhu jay kumaran and you will see my linkedin um yeah my facebook page and the website awesome yes. so you're on all socials and you've got your website and i'll post the links to those in the show notes to sure. this episode as well so sure. anyone who wants to um just jump on can click through and find you and connect with you really easily i'm sure you'll be yeah. happy to welcome new <laughs> linkedin connections as well sure <laughs> yeah. so this is the, the fun bit this is the bit i love are you ready for some yeah. quick fire questions yeah sure awesome okay great tell me about a book that you think everybody needs to read dare to lead dare to lead what is it about that book that is just a um, a primo recommendation yeah i love dr brené brown who's the author of the book and her work um and yeah for those of you hearing this you can look her up on netflix uh she's there's a ted talk hers is i think one of the most watched ted talks um what she does is she beautifully ties in um a lot of weird concepts in a very real and grounded way mm. um like because she says this is what research says <laughs> and she has evidence and she has examples um which i which i love i think she just decodes leadership including self-leadership and she makes this important distinction between perfection and healthy striving which mm. is a really good lesson that i learned yes yeah this is two weeks in a in a row that a Brene book Brene brown book has been recommended really okay <laughs> i think yeah, yeah I, I have read this one um i hadn't read um i hadn't read last week's but i think yeah yeah i 100 agree and particularly if you're an audible um an, an audio book person yeah. as well she narrates her own books doesn't she so yeah. she puts her own her own spin her own quirkiness her own realness to yes. the words as well and it makes it all <laughs> the more entertaining i love it yeah <laughs> it is quite funny and humorous yeah absolutely <laughs> everybody loves <laughs> tell us about your favorite song of all time and why oh god this is so difficult i know right <laughs> <laughs> hmm. what's a song of the moment that's something that so many people have said you know i don't have an all-time favorite song there's just at the moment if this song comes on it lifts my mood and i'm like yeah okay <laughs> I don't know. Fortunately, unfortunately, we are stuck with my the favorite songs of my kid, <laughs> my four year old. He ensures we play it all the time. I remember those years when you'd get in the car and it's like, put Wiggles on, I'll put Play School on. And I'm like, oh God, again. <laughs> no, his his songs are actually pretty good. He has a really good taste. <laughs> um, he does. <laughs> this is so funny, but um i like this really quirky song called so done i'm done oh yeah heard, yeah yeah have yeah. you heard that song <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's like yeah i'm done i'm so done <laughs> but i'm I done with all of this <laughs> all of this 
I don't know. I just feel like it's it makes me feel very spiritual. <laughs> like so he's singing it in a very you know weird context. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, done with all the bullshit. Move on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like it. <laughs> yeah. Maybe an easier question then. What about a quote? What's a favorite quote? Mm. My favorite quote is: I think the moment you take responsibility for everything is the moment you can start changing anything about your life. Mm, that's a deep one, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, I like it. I'm a big one for responsibility. You know, there's, there's it's that whole wishing, waiting, hoping, waiting for someone to come along and save us. I'm like, no one is going to do that. Like we have yeah. to make our own opportunities. We have to like strive our own path, walk our own path. I think that's a really powerful message, isn't it? Absolutely. To me, that's what leadership is. Leadership is ultimate responsibility. Yeah. If today we had people do that, we would have a much better world. People are just living in denial, excuses and blame. So to me, that's leadership. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Let's get a bit more practical. What mm. about a, um, an app, a piece of software or a piece of tech that's changed how you do business? How I do business? Mm. Hmm. I would say maybe Canva. Um, otherwise you complicate bloody every single thing in your head, how you're supposed to design something, put out a social media post. They have templates for everything. <laughs> I love Canva. I have Canva open on my computer pretty much 24 <laughs> seven. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a female developed app um, by a woman for, I think, female entrepreneurs. It's quite intuitive. Um, which is which is a refreshing change because when people talk about templates, they are very limiting in the past, but mm -hmm. this one has a very intuitive sense to it. You can change things around. So I just love it. Yeah, I would, mm. I would have to agree. Canva would be one of my uh, top five, probably even top, I, I don't even know that I could get it down to five. Definitely in my top 10. <laughs> yeah, Absolutely. I don't know. I just rely, my whole life has changed due to my calendar. <laughs> So I don't know if Google Calendar gets the credit, but I just realized that if I say that something is important, I just schedule it in um, yeah. and it becomes part of my real values. Yes. Like, for example, health. Oh, for a long time, I've been, oh, this is important. I need to lose weight, but I never put in time for it. But my calendar has everything that I think is important. The moment yeah. I schedule it in, it gets done and then it becomes part of who I am. So I would actually say my calendar, how I learned to use it now. <laughs> I think that that's awesome. And that ties all, almost in with the next question, but that's something that I say um, to my like one-on-one -on -one clients a mm. lot. You know, if, if you're struggling to implement something that you're saying you want to do, mm. schedule it in your calendar. Like mm. it might sound ridiculous to schedule, mm. um, you know, have dinner with hubby or take dog yeah. for a walk or yeah. sit down and play a game with kids. But if mm. that's what it's going to take to make you take action and do it, yeah. then do it. You're not going to do it forever. True. It's just to, just to like get that ball rolling. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So I agree with that, Claire. I think yeah. it's about creating a new habit, breaking the old rhythm. Um, like right now, I don't need, a, I don't need to put it in my calendar or I don't need to write it in my journal, which I did when I began. Every single day I'd put it in my journal. Yep. How many steps did I walk? Did I do my workout? Did I meditate? Now it's my habit. I don't have to write it anymore. But yes. to get to here, I had to do it like literally like disciplined in a disciplined yep. in a way. Like <laughs> yep. No, I was exactly the same. Like with drinking water, you know, every mm. glass of water that I drank, I'd track it. I'd like in my fit ah, app, you know, just, just so I can, just so I can start I'm like, okay, right. I've got to drink. I'm going to drink two liters of water today. That's my goal. Yeah. That was what was written in there. And it's yeah. like every drink I have, I'm going to track it because that's what I needed to do to create the habit. Exactly. Like yeah. you said, yeah, wow. we have to okay. do what works fast. I've been struggling with water. So now I know exactly what to do. <laughs> <laughs> and, and one thing I want to add here is when we don't do what we said we will do instead of bringing shame around it it's just bringing saying this is what it is just look at it as data mm, that's such great advice and again probably another hack <laughs> but i'm going to ask you for your official hack what mm. is one what is a life hack a life tip that you can leave us with life tip oh my god that's such a big question <laughs> i know 
Yeah. You've left us with so many already. <laughs> I think responsibility. Mm -hmm. To me, that's what it comes down to. Um, it brings empowerment. It brings relief. It brings acceptance. But what we can't change. Yeah. Mm. I think that's what it is. I think I think that's I think that's great. I think that's an awesome place to leave it because again, like you say, responsibility, taking responsibility is the the key to leadership, personal leadership. And it just has wrapped our conversation up beautifully. Yeah, fantastic. Thank, thank you so much. I've I've loved it as always. Um, and just a, remember, a reminder to anyone listening, all of Madhu's contact information will be in the show notes to the episode. So you can jump on and connect with her. I'm sure you'll be happy to um, say hello to anybody. And um, yeah, thank you so much again. It's been awesome. Thanks, Claire, for having me and for this wonderful conversation. Great questions. <laughs> um, and yeah, you always bring a very happy um you know um face <laughs> and an attitude which i love so lovely Thank talking you. to you and that's a wrap for episode number 24 of the real life business podcast and i'm super curious to know what you took away from this conversation Leadership as a term is something I believe a lot of people, women in particular, self-select themselves out of. And by that, I don't mean women don't stand up to be leaders. I simply notice that in my experience, women in particular don't even classify themselves as a leader, especially if they work for themselves. To me though, leadership is about influence. It's about inspiration and energizing those around us to succeed. So really, in my view, any parent is a leader. Any committee member is a leader. Any community builder is a leader. So leadership is all around us. It is so much more than just in a corporate setting or a boss employee type relationship. I believe Madhu makes a fascinating point when she talks about leadership starting with self. We can't lead and inspire others if we can't first lead and inspire ourselves. And this is precisely why I focus so heavily on self-awareness and self-development when I'm working with small business clients. Understanding how we operate helps us get the most out of ourselves and those around us. And so it's incredibly important when growing a sustainable business. My second takeaway from this conversation is around the concept of deciding to imperfectly act instead of perfectly procrastinating. I'd say we're probably all guilty to some extent of overthinking something and delaying taking action. But the fact is, very little is not reversible or fixable. Imadu talked about making a decision and acting on it, regardless of how ready we feel, because let's face it, when are we ever going to feel ready enough? This point, you know, it really got me thinking because I think there are a hell of a lot of us that agonize over making the right decision. But what I took from what Madhu said here is that it's not which decision we make that's important, more a decision full stop. Taking focused, intentional action on a path is far more powerful than, you know, tiptoeing or self-doubting or, you know, inaction around a whole heap of paths. And so as we said earlier, like very few things are irreversible. So we can always fine tune or adjust things along the way as long as we've made a decision and decided to start. The final takeaway for me from this conversation is that we can't run a successful business with a scarcity or an employee mindset. Now, as an employee, we trade our time for money, but to evolve into a successful business owner, we need to evolve our thinking as well. And when we shift from, you know, how do I get more clients? How do I get more customers? How do I get more members, more sales to how can I serve? What can I give? We shift into an abundance mindset and with that, we learn to trust ourselves more. And Madhu described this as going from hustling for our worth to knowing our worth. And I think that's a really, really powerful distinction to check in on and check ourselves against. 
Now I trust that you took something away from this conversation and in fact all of the conversations that we've had on season one of Real Life Business. Next week will be the season one wrap up where I'll be sharing some of my favorite bits from the last four months before I'm taking a short break to record some new content for the Real Life Business Hub. So I'll be back in your ears in a few weeks time. So, but to make sure you don't get withdrawals in that break, be sure to sign up for Real Talk where I'll be bringing you weekly doses of inspiration, stories, recommendations, and business growth tips direct to your inbox. You can sign up for Real Talk from my website, www.reallifebusiness.com.au, or there'll also be a link in the show notes to this episode. So make sure you jump in and do that and new editions of Real Talk will be in your inbox each Friday. Alrighty then, that is all from me for this week. As I said, there is one more episode in season one and I will be back in your ears next week with that. And until then, bye-bye.